<laughs> hey everyone, welcome to the first gear and beer of the summer of 2019. Yeah, cheers. We're here at the beach house. Started the season with some striper fishing from the beach last night. And we are drinking Maine Beer Company's Peeper Ale, an American pale ale that is absolutely delicious. It's go-to beer. If you had one beer, you know, you play the game all the time. If you're on the island, one food, all the rest of that stuff. In my island game is if you had one beer you had to drink all the time, it's Peeper. Or lunch. Main Beer Company lunch Good point. is a second. It could be for dinner. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> So Main Beer Company Peeper was a uh, 2009 beer, first beer that the founder and his brother started after a whole bunch of home brewing in their garage. Uh, they started uh, iterating on a bunch of recipes and they came up with Peeper. It's uh, again American Pale Ale, APA, 5.5% alcohol, so pretty low on the ABV scale. Named after the uh, Peeper Toad here in Maine. So the chirping you hear at night, I guess everyone was thinking about spring when they were brewing, but uh, Main Beer Company, if you haven't had a chance to stop in and um, try all their uh, their beers, they're up in Freeport. Beautiful new tasting room with wood-fired pizza, very fancy fountain they've got going on yeah. now. Dinner is always on tap. Right, lunch is on tap and they have a bunch more beer. They um, have some creative names for their beers too, so it's fun to sort of catch up on the history of those. But right. highly recommend it. Heading up to Beans to grab some fishing gear, stop in there and Perfect uh, place to stop. Yeah, have at it. Yeah, um, Peeper is uh, tastes pretty light, right? It's uh, American Pale Ale, but it tastes pretty light, and yet it's got a pretty hoppy finish to it. Um, you got Amarillo, Cascade, Centennial hops in there. Um, someone was saying it's one step away or half a step away from being an IPA. I don't quite taste that, but uh, it is deceptively hoppy when you look at the really sort of translucent straw color on the on the beer. Yeah, there was a review of it written that I think is is probably pretty good, and it talked about that it was three quarters of an IPA, and but not bitter. Mm -hmm. So for those of you that uh, Love an IPA and but want something a little lighter, then uh, this one's sort of good. I know the IPAs have been cranking up lately in the uh, in the the ABB. double IPAs. Yeah, so eight point fours, delicious game stuff. But yeah. you know this one this one serves a purpose. So anyway, yeah. cheers from uh, you all. I hope you try a peeper as we get going here on the review. Delicious. So all right, today we are reviewing. The Grundens Deck Boss Ankle Boot. And it is a boss. Yeah, it's a great boot. Heavyweight, sort of sturdy, perfect. First thing I noticed actually when I got these in the mail, picked them up, I fished, everyone will know the Extra Tufts. Extra Tufts sort of defined this market for a while. So I picked these up and I was like, wow, there is some heft to this. Yeah, there's a different uh, feel to it than the Extra Tufts, for instance. In fact, we, uh, because we were so curious about it, we grabbed uh, a pair of our Extra Tufts and put them side by side on the scale, just to give everyone an same idea. Same size, same style, everything. And uh, turns out that these uh, have the Extra Tuft by, oh, six or seven ounces, so almost a half a pound uh, heavier than the Extra Tuft. Uh, and that's not to say it's bad, it just is. No. So, you know, depending upon what you're using your uh, deck boot, boat, deck boot, boat, four, sorry. <laughs> Depends on what you're using that's your deck boot. That's a 5.5% beer. Yes. What do we do? One <laughs> it's of the, the first IPAs. review of the day, too. <laughs> <laughs> so, it depends what you're using your deck boot for. Um, if you're sort of all day on the boat, sort of crushing up and down in waves, early season, a little cooler then I think the Grundens probably, you know, fit the, fit the spot a little better, mm -hmm. a little heavier, a little more support than the extra tough. Yeah, I think some of the weight difference comes, uh, the sole of the Grundens is much thicker. Um, it's got a really solid rubber sole. There's also, you've got this rubber exterior here. Uh, Grundens has added, I think, just a little bit more to the rubber exterior. Sometimes where you'd see either the neoprene or this, what they call the thermoregulating, which I think is just a fancy word for this sort of neoprene and cloth liner here. Yeah. Um, 
the grunnings have a little bit more rubber. Um, and again, that's not a criticism. That means I think there's a, just a little bit more waterproof protection here. Um, I haven't actually noticed the extra weight when I put them on. Um, so we were fishing Father's Day weekend down in the Cape. Some pretty snotty conditions. Yeah, on a couple a, days. Two days. Yeah. Uh, you had three. Who's kind of? <laughs> uh, on a 20-foot Jones Brothers. So, you know, it was a wet ride. Yes. Um, and wearing these... Uh, and I was bone dry. Yep, totally. And uh, and as we said, comfortable too. I mean, right. we wore them all day long, sort of standing out there, taking the pounding, and good support, uh, dry, warm, yeah. worked perfect. Right. Warm, um, it probably, is, this goes to sizing. So I wore them uh, with a pair of smart wools, and I sized mine to my regular boot size, so I didn't size up. Yeah. Uh, they only come in whole sizes, so yeah. you know size up if you're a half a size. But I picked my normal boot size of these, and put a pair of smart wools on, and they fit just fine. Yeah, and I think some has to do with the flexibility of rubber. Yeah. Um. So I think you can air a little bit if you if you're worried about fit, you can probably go with a light sock and a heavy sock, and they'll both feel okay. Yep. Yeah. But sizing fit uh, sort of right on. They they only come in one width, but again, maybe the stretchiness of it didn't seem to bother me. I'm a wider foot, uh, and it didn't matter to me, and it, it fit my length perfectly. So you can trust the sizing on this when yep. you guys order them online. Yep. For the uh, $84.99 that they are, you can uh, get yourself um, the right size. Right. That's a good price point, too, I think, for these boots, $84.99. Uh, that feels very reasonable. Uh, in terms of the boot as well, it's got a removable insole. Uh, I know a couple of times uh, I've gotten out and uh, just <laughs> through my own failure, like I'm wearing shorts and I get wet and I got a whole bunch of water down in the bottom of these, if you let them steep, they will stink. Um, and so if you can remove the insoles, as you can't from some boots, you can't from these, and let them air out, I think that's a good feature. Yeah, they're, they're rubber, folks. They, right. uh, they'll work like a fish tank if yeah. you fill them with water, <laughs> yeah. and they will keep full. Right. They're not going to leak in or out. Right. I also think this insole has some nice arch support. It's got some good padding. Uh, but if it does wear out on you, you can always go and get like a Dr. Scholl's or whatever, put your own insert into there, which I've also done with other boots in the past. Yeah, just a general comment on these. I don't recommend really beach fishing with them. Uh, we, you know, as you all know, that we're uh, close to the beach right here, and we head down to fish, and they're okay if you're just going to let the wave whack, a, whack against the, your toe a little bit, but the first wave up over it, you're going to spend the rest of the time down there with a foot full of water. Um, and, you know, that's... And sand. The, and sand. It's, it's okay. Nasty. It warms up after a bit, yeah. but uh, <laughs> there is a fair amount of sloshing, and you yeah. got to come back and pour them out and pull the uh, pull the inserts out right so a couple of uh, observations maybe on improvables yeah um, you want to talk about your big bugaboo yeah so um, so I, and let me just be clear I really like these boots wear them all the time and and you've you know, been doing you've been mowing the lawn I'm wearing, right I mow the lawn in them I mean it's they're awesome you go work out in the Super yard with sturdy, them yeah waterproof you get crap on them it's fine you spray it off you work right. in the hose work in the garden they are great sort of boot in that regard um, the one suggestion I would have is that the pull tabs of these are made of uh, what would be not as thick a material and they don't have very big loops so I don't depending upon who you are but I have fingers that don't really fit in the loops and so if you're like me you put your boots on not necessarily sitting down but you're dancing around on one foot trying to grab a finger into this loop right. and trying to stuff it in there and get that pull tab working right they have a tendency the loops to flop down so they become pretty narrow um, so you got to push on them and then put your finger in as opposed to some other boots where this tab actually just stays in a sort of loop formation. So, Yeah, I'm sure I could probably solve it with another loop of twine through there or a piece of rope and that's fine. We but could put some Zappa Gap on it and stiffen them up or something. But, <laughs> right. Yeah. But would recommend for the next round of these boots, hopefully that Grundon will um, come out with a sort of thicker tab. Which is interesting because the boot is really built industrially yeah. strength, you know, well. So... Yeah. Uh, it didn't come out well. I didn't. Industrially strength. Industrial strength. Yeah. It's yeah. built well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the other observation that I would have, and this is uh, this is an aesthetic one, is um, over time it does build up um, some more gunk than say darker boots do. Um, so there's more browning. This is after one season. Um, does that matter to the performance? No, uh, but it's got a little bit of a patina on it. So if you want something that looks like it stays clean, um, you're gonna have to spray these down and maybe even scrub them down a little bit. But yeah, if you're um, looking to wear these things after hours with your shorts and you know your fishing shirt out to the club, then uh, <laughs> the club, then, then you're gonna the need pirate to... <laughs> bar down at the beach or what? Well, that might be all yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so that's it. Great boot, well made, well done, Grundon. I mean, they're joining the sort of extra tough world, uh, and I think they've done a good job, from my opinion. I would say also that um, Grunin's has been known for those bright orange overall bibs for a long time that you can recognize from a mile away. They've been uh, making a big push on footwear for this season. So they've got this ankle size. They also have a slip-on size, which I have as well. Super easy to throw on and you just push your foot into it and you're out the door. Uh, and they've started making some flip-flops as well. Um, those flip-flops are, they've got a more rigid heel uh, and arch support, uh, super stiff. Uh, I didn't know what I would think about them at first and actually they're the most comfortable. I'm a heel striker, uh, so I put my heel down first and regular Tevas with just the soft foam, uh, by the end of the summer, my heels really hurt at the end of a day. Uh, these are super comfortable, I would say. Yeah, um, same thing. I'm not a big, uh, I prefer Crocs over uh, the sandals, but uh, the Grunden sandals are sort of the best that I've uh, worn. Uh, they all, all three, by the way, come with the, uh, the light tread on it. So if you're talking about any concern about sort of boat shoe and boat, uh, boat scuffing and things, and I understand that, you know, some of the technology now, depending upon what the what the tread is and what the sole is, isn't mm -hmm. gonna mark even if it's dark, but I think Grundon's just made sure of it. The sandals, um, the ankle, and the uh, the slip-ons are all running this sort of tan bottom to them that, um, that you know, you can sort of show the captain as you get on to make sure you don't get in trouble mm -hmm. getting on the boat. Slipping into something comfortable and Grundon's has never really gone together <laughs> in my mind, but they're starting to persuade me, so. Anyway, that's our first gear and beer of the summer 2019. We got the Grunin's Deck Boss and Maine Peeper. Yeah, cheers everyone. Have Thanks, a great Grunin's. season. No, <laughs> right.